Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We are being blessed in a series on Isaiah, the Gospel prophet. Today, one of the most remarkable defeats recorded in all of Scripture. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about defeating enemies. It's about victory through trusting in God. Amen. So I'm Amen. glad you joined us. And welcome to the team. Isn't this a great series? Mm -hmm. yeah. Isaiah, the Gospel prophet, and we are so happy that you're with us too, wherever you are. We've got a special gift for you during this series. It's an audio book. You can have a digital download of the audio book, Radical Evidence. You see all of the prophecies we're studying in Isaiah about Messiah. It's all through the Old Testament scriptures. In fact, Jesus gave a Bible study to two disciples on the Emmaus Road. You'll be blessed as you listen to this audio book and stories of people today whose lives have been transformed connecting with Jesus. How can you get your copy? Just write to our regular email address, sshope at hopetv.org. And in the subject line, just put free offer. It will we'll send you the information so you mm -hmm. can download your free copy. You can even share it with friends who need to know more of the truth about Jesus, the mm -hmm. true Messiah. You know, we're so excited to hear from you, our Hope Sabbath School family around the world. And here are just a few emails. But when you write and ask for your free audio book, Share with us how God's blessing your life through a study of His Word. Well, let's see. Here's um, Arizona in the United States. Mamie writes, Greetings, Hope Sabbath School. Greetings. I've been watching for almost two years now, and I am thoroughly blessed by the program. May God continue to bless and keep you. Amen. 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 Well, thanks, Mamie, for writing to us from Arizona. You brought some joy to us. Here's Monique writing from Jamaica. And she says, for six years, I quietly observed the Sabbath, making decisions to honor it. Mm. Hope Sabbath School has always felt like a fellowship. Notice Hope mm -hmm. Sabbath School. Mm -hmm. She'd be keeping Sabbath by herself. Mm -hmm. But Hope Sabbath School has always felt like a fellowship because so many members share at one time. Mm. I've always appreciated how honest everyone is. It couldn't be anything but of God. It's Amen. like how Moses and David weren't portrayed as perfect, mm -hmm. so their stories are even more of a blessing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord for Hope Sabbath School. Thank you for opening your hearts and creating a safe space for so many. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Monique, thanks for writing to us from Jamaica. And we're excited you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family too. Here's a note from Nabil. Nabil is from Algeria but studying at university mm -hmm. in France. Mm -hmm. And Nabil writes and says, I am a student in Collonges, France. Hope Sabbath School helps me to grow spiritually and improve my English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. May the Lord bless this new study and your ministry. Well, Nabil, I know there are not a lot of followers of Jesus in your country, but I'm thankful that God has placed a call on your life to let the light of Jesus shine through you. Thanks for writing to us. Here's just a short note from a donor in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you to each one of you. We're a donor-supported ministry. Some may be able to help with a little, some with a little more, as the Lord has blessed. Mm -hmm. Just a short note. We appreciate your ministry, especially during this stay-at-home era. Right now, we're in a health pandemic. I don't know what it is like in your part of the world, but some people can't go to church, mm -hmm. and they, they're locked at home. Mm -hmm. Here's a note of thanks from a gentleman in North Carolina and a check for $3,000 to help yeah. Hope Sabbath School. Amen. You know, I'm so thankful that Hope Sabbath School didn't stop. We have record six months ahead, but we were shut down for a while, yeah. but I'm thankful they let us come back to the studio, though you notice there's only five of us instead of 12. But God is blessing. Give them a wave, everyone, the Gideon's <laughs> band. Yeah, God is able to work even with a small group. Well, Ernest writes from Ghana and says, Thank you, Hope Sabbath School. I always use the Hope Sabbath School outline to teach a study at my church, and it's going great. <laughs> That's awesome. God bless you and everyone, especially those who come together so we can have this lively discussion. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, what many have found, and what I want to encourage you to do, 
is download the outline and start an in-depth interactive Bible study in your church. Mm -hmm. And you can give a copy of the outline to everyone, just like mm -hmm. Ernest is there in Ghana. Well, they, we've, we always are hearing lots of great testimonies from around the world. I hope you'll write to us, sshope, hopetv.org. Members in over 220 countries around the world. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Right now, we need all of you to sing because we can't sing in the studio. But our theme song is taken from Isaiah chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let's sing together. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this amazing book inspired by the Holy Spirit, Isaiah the prophet wrote. Today, this amazing story of a great defeat, but also a great victory for those who will trust fully in God. Mm -hmm. I pray that, Lord, this would find application in our lives today mm -hmm. because Hope Sabbath School members around the world, some of us may be experiencing great battles in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not inappropriate to say if the Lord could give a victory 2,700 years ago, He can give a victory today. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I pray the Holy Spirit will be in our midst and in our hearts. Lead us into your truth as it is in Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, if you've missed anything in this series on Isaiah, you can go to our website, Isaiah the Gospel Prophet. Go to hopetv.org slash hopess. You can watch every one that you've missed. We've discovered there is a God who Could knows the trust. future. He knows the end from the beginning, mm -hmm. and he can reveal that to his servants, the prophets. Yes. And the most important revelation in this book is that Messiah is coming. Yeah. Amen. And we learn so much that's fulfilled in every detail in the life of Jesus, mm -hmm. the Messiah. But we also discover, as in our study today, that God can give victories in impossible situations. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Someone ought to get excited about <laughs> that. Amen. God can give victories in impossible situations. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 36. And we're going to start, Stephanie, if you'd start our study today in verse 1. What's the challenge uh, that the people of God are facing? And I'll be reading from the King James Version. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. Does anybody know why it's happening at this point? point? Syria's fallen, 
the kingdom of, of the north, mm. the tribes of the north have fallen. Uh, Jason, do you know why at this time Sennacherib's coming, uh, the Assyrians are coming mm. and attacking Judah? Yes, so the Bible actually tells us over in the records related to the kings that uh, there was a previous king named Ahaz, and this was the father of Hezekiah. He had been loyal. He had this alliance, an appropriate alliance with Assyria, but then Hezekiah, his son, who trusts in God, breaks off this alliance and says, I'm not going to be allied with this uh, pagan foreign leader who doesn't follow the Lord God. So Hezekiah's father had not only made an alliance, he where did he find all of the treasures that he gave to this Assyrian king? From the temple. Yeah. From the temple of the house of God. Yes. <laughs> That's like saying, not only do I trust God, I'm going to give his things away. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but Hezekiah has a different attitude. Mm -hmm. So he breaks off the alliance. Yes. The Assyrian forces, which were known for being particularly ruthless, mm -hmm. are coming. Mm -hmm. uh, someone, mm -hmm. the pragmatist, would say, that was a foolish thing to do, Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. But we'll see that mm -hmm. God can give victories even in mm. impossible situations, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So enter the, the um, governor or the chief of staff of the Assyrians, but first the comment by Stephanie. Could we say, especially in the impossible <laughs> mm -hmm. situation? I was thinking yes. the same thing. Okay, <laughs> God can give victories, especially in impossible yes. situations. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, uh, of course, that then all glory will go to Amen. heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Well, let's keep reading. Uh, the, we've got this uh, force, this invading force coming against the people of God. Uh, and I'm going to ask Lisa, if you'd continue to read, would you read um, down th from verse 2 down through verse 5 for us? Okay. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then the king of Assyria sent the Rabshakeh with a great army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. And he stood by the aqueduct from the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field. And Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asap, the recorder, came out to him. Then the Rabshakeh said to him, Say now to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this in which you trust? I say you speak of having plans and power for war, but they are mere words. Now in whom do you trust that you rebel against me? Mm. Well, uh, he doesn't want to know the answer, mm. but what is the answer? In whom does Hezekiah trust? God. 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 He trusts in the Lord, the Lord God. God. Amen. But this, uh, well, by the way, it calls him the Rab Shaker. Does anyone have in your margin what that word means, mm. uh, Billy? Mine says uh, chief of staff or governor. Chief of staff. Yeah. So mm. this is kind of the right hand man, right? Mm. Uh, the king's not going right up front unless somebody shoots him with an arrow but he sends his governor, a chief of staff, yep. and he comes and he engages in a propaganda campaign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the propaganda campaign could be summarized uh, in one sentence. Uh, what would it be? Don't trust. Don't trust uh, uh, your king, Hezekiah. Well, I think it's more than don't trust mm -hmm. your king, Hezekiah, though th that would be included. Mm -hmm. don't. J Jason? Don't trust God. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, the God in whom you say you trust yep. didn't deliver Lachish. Mm -hmm. The God, by the way, there are uh, reliefs, you know, the carvings on the wall, there are reliefs that show the conquering mm -hmm. of Lachish, mm -hmm. okay? So it's like, these have fallen, these have fallen, these have fallen, and you're next. Yep. How foolish of you to think that mm. you could trust in God. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm. The story continues. Uh, we're reading on in the story. And uh, we got down, I think, through verse 5, right? right. Mm -hmm. yeah. In whom do you trust? Let's keep reading, mm -hmm. Lisa. Verses 6, and uh, let's read down through verses, let's see. Go down through verse 12. Okay. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Look, you are trusting in the staff of this broken reed, mm -hmm. Egypt on which if a man leans, it will go into his hand and pierce it. 
So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away and said to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar? Now, therefore, I urge you, give a pledge to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you 2,000 horses, if you are able on your part to put riders on them. How then will you repel one captain of the least of my master's servants and put your trust in Egypt for, horse, for chariots and horsemen? Have I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah said to the Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it. And do not speak to us in Hebrew, in the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But the Rabshakeh said, Has my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words, and not to the men who sit on the wall, who will eat and drink their own waste with you? Oh, what's going on here? What, what strategy, mm -hmm. uh, Jason, is this... Uh, a chief of staff using from the Assyrians. He's trying to intimidate them, both uh, the leaders of the people and also the people present. Mm. And he's even making up lies to do it. He, this is propaganda. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't miss the lies. I mean, there was some mm -hmm. truth there, but deception is a mixture. What are some of the lies he's mixing in there? Well, one of the lies relates to the high places. These are kind of pagan worship places that Hezekiah has actually taken down. And this guy says, Hezekiah went against God to do that, the God you serve, even though the truth is Hezekiah is actually bringing them back to the worship the way God intended. That's one of the lies. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's uh, another lie, too. He says that your God, meaning the God of heaven, that he's working for him. So he's making claims here, which actually reminds me almost of like what Satan himself did, that mm -hmm. I'm doing this on behalf of God. He, he, he's directly mm -hmm. claiming uh, God's power in this, the true God, even though he's against God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to keep going with the story and then we'll make some comments. Mm -hmm. 13 through 20, the story is unfolding. This, this is a 8th century BC propaganda campaign. Mm -hmm. This is dropping leaflets from airplanes. <laughs> this is social media spamming mm -hmm. to the ultimate degree. Mm -hmm. And it's a mixture of a little bit of truth, we're a powerful nation, mm -hmm. and a lot of lies. Mm -hmm. Let's keep reading verses 13 through 20. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out with a loud voice in Hebrew and said, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you. Mm for he will not be able to deliver you, nor let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, the Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, make peace with me by a present and come out to me and every one of you eat from his own vine, and every one from his own fig tree, and every one of you drink the waters of his own cisterns, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Beware, lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Has any one of the gods of the nations delivered its land from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharaim? Indeed, th have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of these lands have delivered their countries from my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem from my hand? More lies. Mm. Yeah. More propaganda. Mm. <laughs> Stephanie, you're frowning. Um, but, but that propaganda goes on today, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it, you can't trust in a God. You, you can't even see him, you know, and, and believe that he's spoken through prophets mm. And, mm. And, and will guide yes. you. And, it, 
as I was listening to it read again, I all of it, it's, it's do you trust in God or don't you trust in His Word? Yeah. Mm -hmm. These, it's such a perversion mm -hmm. of the truth. And it's true, today we run into that. I've, I've had people say, well, God's not hearing your prayers. Mm. So, you know, why isn't He doing it for you as a Christian? Sometimes we think that Christians don't have uh, bad things happen to them. And that's just not true. It actually builds us to make us stronger as mm. we look to Jesus mm. and we cling to His Word, knowing that His Word is faithful, even if I can't see it, especially when I can't see it. I have to say, Your Word says this, I trust it regardless of what I see. Mm -hmm. And they're looking, this is human reasoning versus God's Word. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it, human reasoning. Well, what about this? Didn't that, you're, are you sure you wanna do that? This is all human reasoning to me, from what I could see. Mm -hmm. Trusting in God's Word, it's faithful and true. It's the only thing that will get us through. Well, let's see how King Hezekiah, let's see what counsel, Billy, he gives. If you'd read verse 21 of uh, the chapter for us. Okay. Uh, chapter 36, verse 21. <laughs> what are your thoughts about King Hezekiah's uh, uh, instruction to, these, uh, mm -hmm. to his, his leaders? I'll be reading from the, from the King James Version, New King James Version. But they held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, do not answer him. What do you think about that, Jason? That's very wise. When, <laughs> yes. the, when the enemy comes at you with mm -hmm. attacks, whether it's openly blatant or in this case, de deceptive with all kinds of propaganda, the best answer is to not answer. Let God be the one to answer. Don't you try to do it for yourself. That's yeah. right. What do you think, Travis? I was just thinking, I wish that Eve would have had that counsel. Don't even talk to him. Don't mm -hmm. even talk to Don't him. Don't even talk to the enemy. Don't yeah. talk. All right, now there is something that we should do, mm -hmm. uh, but, but that, because if mm -hmm. they had tried to explain, oh, some of these things you said were not true, it was not Hezekiah, those yes. were not God's high places. Was this governor wanting to listen? No. No, no. no not at all. It's pure propaganda. Yes. What should we do then rather than not listen to the enemy? Well, let's look at the next verse. Um, Travis, could you read for us verse 22 of uh, Isaiah chapter 36? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and Joah the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him the words of the Reb Shekha. What do you think about tearing clothes? That's, uh, what, what was that, what did that mean uh, in their culture? Do, do you yeah, know, Lisa? It's like tearing their hearts. It's an expression of their hearts just yes. being humble and distressed. Mm. Uh, anyone want to add to that? Because oftentimes we think of renting like um, with sackcloth mm -hmm. and ashes too. Mm -hmm. They Travis? were severely troubled. Mm -hmm. severely yeah. troubled, and they're expressing their distress. Mm -hmm. yes. Have we found a solution yet by tearing our clothes? <laughs> no. No. Not yet, right? Not yet. Travis, could you keep reading for us in chapter 37 uh, and read for us, if you would, the first four verses of chapter 37. Again, I'm reading from the New King James Version. And so it was when King Hezekiah heard it that he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. <laughs> no, just hold it right there. We're going <laughs> to read the next few verses. Mm -hmm. What is really important about that for, of that verse? <laughs> Jason? He went into the house of the Lord. He went to God. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to be in distress. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tears his clothes. Yep. Covered himself with sackcloth. But don't stop there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He went into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's see what happens next. We're reading on verses 2 to 4. Then he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz. And they said to him, Thus says Achiah, This day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy, for the children have come to birth but there is no strength to bring them forth. It may be that the Lord your God will hear the words of the Reb Shekha, mm. whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to reproach the living God 
and rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Mm. Mm. Okay. Stephanie, you talked about God specializes in victory, especially in impossible situations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Back then, but also now. So what principle can we learn when we're getting bombarded by the enemy's propaganda? Mm. Mm -hmm. Go to the house of the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be mesmerized by the propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Go to the house of the Lord yes. and seek. Mm -hmm. what, did they, what, what did they do when they went to the house of the Lord? Seek God. God. They saw God and they said, uh, go, go to the prophet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Go to Isaiah, right? right? Yes. What, ha what will the Lord tell us to do? Now, we don't have prophets walking around today, but we do have the it's writings right. of the prophets, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And doesn't it say somewhere that the word of the prophets, his word is a lamp? Yes. 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 To our feet? Yes. And a light to our path. And a light to our path. Okay, <laughs> so let's see, Stephanie, you have a comment, and then I want you to read on with verse 5. I, I also see him separating himself from those who are, um, in other words, he's not around Repshaka, um, and he's going to the Lord. So distancing ourselves mm. from the noise so that we can hear God mm, and His yeah. leading. Powerful. Isn't there a text somewhere in the Psalms that says, I have set the Lord always, always before, before me. me. Mm. When He is ashamed. at my right hand, I will not be shaken, shaken or moved. Yes. That's right. Uh, that's Psalm 16 and verse 8. I have set the Lord. So I'm not yes. setting the enemy's propaganda yes. before me. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm setting the Lord before me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when He's at my yeah. right hand, I will not be moved. Now, mm -hmm. we can go to the Word of God, to the words of the prophets. Yes. They actually call the prophet. Will you mm -hmm. read what the prophet tells them? Reading on in chapter 37 now, verses 5 through 7. And the King James Version says, Thus the, kings of, thus the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say unto your master, Thus saith the Lord, be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard, wherewith the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon them, upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Mm. Mm. A prophecy Isaiah gives about this massive force that's mm. gathered against Jerusalem. And what's the prophecy say? He's going to go back home. <laughs> He's going to yeah. go back home and it's not going to be a happy arrival mm. no. when he gets back ending. home. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, this this uh, leader who is not only intimidating you, but blaspheming the name of the Lord yes. God. Yes. Mm. He, here's a prophecy about what will happen yes. to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And even before that prophecy, he's, he says, be not afraid of the words that you've heard. Oh. Ah. It was a comfort. Don't, don't worry about that. Don't be afraid of the words. Let me tell you what will happen. Mm -hmm. So the propaganda continues. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that tell you? The enemy doesn't give up. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the enemy doesn't care about truth either. Yeah. That's right. The enemy could say, oh, well, if the Lord said this is all going to fall apart, then we'll stop harassing you. No. Mm -hmm. mm. Does Satan know that his time is short? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yes, he does. He knows. Mm -hmm. He knows who rules over the affairs of history. Mm -hmm. Does he give up? No. Why? Why didn't, why didn't Sennacherib give up? Why didn't uh, his governor, the Rabbi Shaka, Shake, why didn't he give up? Mm -hmm. Because they were aligned with darkness. Uh, they were? They were aligned with darkness. They were aligned mm -hmm. with darkness. They were intent yeah. on their own agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which was evil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But they were settled in their own course. Nothing's going to change them. Well, the bombardment continues. But Jason, I, I want you to notice verses 14 through 20, how uh, Hezekiah receives a letter now. The intimidation is continuing. Um, <laughs> What would you do if you received a threat from the enemy? 
-hmm. Well, some people could say, well, I would go into a dark room and cry. Mm -hmm. I would self-medicate <laughs> mm. with food or right. something. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Hezekiah does when now, now the propaganda, the intimidation is coming directly to him mm. in the form of a letter. I'm reading here the New King James Version, Isaiah chapter 37, verses 14 through 20. And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Amen. Then Hezekiah Amen. prayed to the Lord saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God, you alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ears, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God. Mm -hmm. Truly, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord, you alone. Mm. That's the message of the book of Isaiah, by the way. Yes. Yeah. He's the only true God, right, Travis? Mm. I'm noticing a difference between the lead religious leaders below him mm. and, and Hezekiah because he's yes. call, claiming God as his own. Mm -hmm. And when the, when the leaders went to Hezekiah, they said, you're God. Yes. Mm. So, so I noticed that there was, uh, that Hezekiah was a, had to have been a good leader because he trusted in God and, and the leaders be, that were below him uh, must their faith in God must not have been as strong as their king. Mm, that's a good observation. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so what do you think about, about, about his strategy? You know, the, the intimidation comes, he takes it, Lisa, mm -hmm. and he just opens it before the Lord. Mm -hmm. What do you think about I that? I think sometimes when we hear these threats, just bring it to the Lord. Say, Lord, mm -hmm. I hear these things, or I've seen these things about my life. Lord, speak against them, because sometimes we try to speak against them, but it's not our words that matter. It's what God says. Mm -hmm. So bring them before the Lord and God can speak over those words. His power mm -hmm. will trump whatever you hear. Mm -hmm. have, have, yes, Billy. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that you know, his, the, the physical action of you know, bringing the letter before God, it's mm -hmm. almost like he's surrendering. Yes. The issue is like, this is not my problem. Mm -hmm. Like, this is your problem now because um, you know, I've done my part. And my part is to bring it before you. Mm -hmm. All the promises that you know, Isaiah says, it's, it seems that he's not giving up. So now I'm bringing this to you. So it's almost like saying that this is your, your problem, God. Yeah. I think it's very beautiful. <laughs> it was Corey Ten Boom, by the way, we talked about in a previous study who opened the Bible and pointed to it, said, Lord, you said this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, this is a little different. Instead of claiming the promise, he's taking the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't you tell us, Stephanie, that, that God can give a victory, especially yes. in impossible situations. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just bring it to him mm -hmm. and say, you know, didn't, didn't he say that they have laid waste the nations yes. and their lands? Yes. Mm. <laughs> there's acknowledgement. He said, look, this is truth. This, this part is truth. Mm -hmm. But you, you also can save us from their hand. He's trusting. You can save us from mm. your hand. And for your honor, I'm asking that you take, take control of this circumstance. Yes, Jason. I love the contrast between the Rabshakeh who mixes truth and error with Hezekiah who says the truth. He acknowledges Good. the reality, yeah. but then he also takes it before <laughs> God and says, you are truth as well, and your truth is that you can save. Mm -hmm. Right, because you're not made of wood or stone. That's yes. right. right? <laughs> Billy? Exactly. So, uh, this, this, um, yeah, this story reminds me of something that happened to me this week in terms of, you know, I was faced with a tr trial or tribulation, if you want to put it this way. And you wonder, you know, why would God allow this? Mm. You know, it, it, it should have been easy. You know, we know God can, can, can save um, uh, Hezekiah in the kingdom, but it seems that, you know, he's allowing the enemy to still persist. Mm -hmm. And I come to find out that, you know, there is an audience that's, who's watching Hezekiah and also who's watching, you know, the Assyrian king. So they may not be, you know, particularly the people in Jerusalem, but there are other nations who are seeing what's happening. And I come to realize in my personal experience that sometimes God allow 
certain things to happen for the benefit of others so that mm -hmm. when he delivers their faith can be delivered mm -hmm. uh, can be can be restored because they now believe in God um, that he is that powerful that he can conquer mm -hmm. the Assyrian king because some people feel defeated you know they've been beaten and you know in, in, in seeing how God delivers and the simple faith that was used um, is amazing so I, I'd say sometimes God allowed these things to happen because there is an audience of maybe mm. potential believers that will be encouraged uh, seeing Amen. those deliverances. So people are watching, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I like what Travis said, and uh, praise God when there's a leader, a woman mm -hmm. of God, a man of God, who's, who says, I'm going to be true mm -hmm. and trust the word of the Lord mm -hmm. and lay it all before him. Because there were other people whose faith mm -hmm. was not as strong, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. who we pray would have courage to say, well, I'm going to trust God too, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just like Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. Lisa? Yes, and I think earlier we had read, I think that's verse 4, it says, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. There were people's lives at stake, people who were not in positions of power, mm -hmm. you know, widows and orphans, people who were just trusting God. And so this is not just for the people, the movers and shakers, this is for the common man, the common woman who's just trusting God. And God is, and Hezekiah is saying, God, you need to come through for that, that common man who is believing in you and trusting in you. So it's much bigger than Hezekiah and the kings. Mm -hmm. It's for the common people. It's not just about him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me ask you an application, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, read that ancient story and say, good decision, Hezekiah, right? Don't listen to the propaganda. Come to the house of Lord, the Lord. Listen to the word of the prophets, mm -hmm. right? Lay your problem before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Can you think of a time, like Billy just shared, when, when God's invited you to do that, rather mm -hmm. than fight the battle yourself? Yes, Travis. So uh, I believe it was this same story. I was reading s six or seven years ago, and I was in business at the time, and we would purchase properties, and take buildings down and, you know, re rebuild them. And we bought a property and had a school on it. And this, we found out after we purchased it that the school was full of asbestos and it was going to mm. cost anywhere from a half to a million dollars to abate it, wow. which mm. we were not in the, it, we could not handle that kind of a fan financial disaster. And so I s immediately started contemplating putting it in somebody else's name or doing something shady and I re remember this story. Was this after you'd come back to, to, yeah. to the Lord? Okay. Right after, right after. Right after you come back. Yeah, so and so I remember this story and I told my secretary, I said, we got to do what's right and trust God. We're just going to put it on an auction and leave it in God's hands. Even if it brings a dollar, it will be better for us than if it doesn't. But who would be, and we just, it wasn't disclosed to us that it even had asbestos, but we disclosed it, that it Whoa. was full. And we just put it all out there and not only did it not bring a dollar, it, it brought more than what we had paid for, for, the, for it. And we were just, we were, we were so happy at the end of it that we had trusted God. But it was a witness, not just for me, that God follows through, but for all the people there in the office that witnessed mm -hmm. that. That's amazing. Happened. Now, mm -hmm. for people in parts of the world that don't know what asbestos is, that is a cancer mm -hmm. causing, causing agent, agent right? Mm -hmm. And in the country where we live, if you've got that in a building, you've got to take it out. That's what the word abatement is, right? right? But it's not that easy to take out, and it's very expensive. Very expensive. So what do you think? Um, someone react. You're, you're a CPA. You know all about numbers, Stephanie. <laughs> mm. that, that seemed like a very risky thing to do, put it on an auction block and even tell people about the problem mm -hmm. that you weren't told about before. What do you think as you listen to the story? Well, our extremity is God's opportunity. <laughs> yes. And it reminded me of a, a previous study that we were talking about. Are we going to be truthful or is there, is there room for maybe a little white lie or a little shadiness? But I think we can see that it always pays mm -hmm. to be honest. Yes. Mm -hmm. It always pays. And, and God will take care of the results. You know, it could have come back with just a dollar but God could have blessed in a different manner. Mm -hmm. And so being able to say, okay, God, this is what we're going to do and we trust whatever the outcome is, mm -hmm. whether it brings in a dollar or it brings in more, and God would have still been faithful. Mm -hmm. Yes, Billy. And I think, you know, even getting to that point, you know, it needs to start small. You know, you don't become, you know, 
maybe like Travis, you know, overnight, you know, you have all your faith um, uh, in God. I think there is a buildup. You know, we need to be faithful in the smallest things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that it can build up to the bigger, uh, bigger things. So I think every time we have small opportunities to be right um, or to be honest, take advantage of that because that yes. builds more faith. And then once we face bigger challenges, then we can make simple decisions saying that, well, God has been faithful to me uh, before. So mm -hmm. he, he has a track record, so he will be faithful. Well, let's see what happened with Hezekiah because uh, some people don't know the end of the story. <laughs> mm. So Travis, maybe you could read verses 36 and 37 for us uh, because uh, he's kind of made the same decision 2,700 years earlier. And that is, I'm going to walk in the way of truth and trust God, right? And uh, let's see what happens. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then the angel of the Lord went out and killed the camp of the Assyrians, 185,000. Mm. And when people rose early in the morning, there were corpses all dead. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went away and returned home and remained at Nineveh. Now that's really troubling because we know the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish, mm -hmm. uh, but that all should come to repentance, repentance right? Second Peter 3 verse 9. Mm -hmm. So, and doesn't it say God so loved, loved the world? Mm -hmm. So there's 185,000 men, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, though there may mm -hmm. have been women in the fighting army too, I don't know. But... Um, they had families, I'm yeah. assuming, unless they were all slaves. Mm -hmm. So that uh, impacted a huge number of people. Mm -hmm. And they all died that night uh, when an angel of the Lord mm -hmm. flew across the camp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that trouble you? Uh, how do you process that? I feel Lisa? safe. I really do feel safe. It's one angel that takes out 138,000. Just one 85, angel. 85,000 actually. Yeah. 185. 185. And we think about, you know, when we pray to God, can God protect me? Yes, He can. And He doesn't use a lot of resources like we think. You know, sometimes we look at these foreign, you know, whatever they are, they're so big and scary. One angel was able to take out all these enemy forces. So we, we don't put our trust in thing, you know, fables and stories, we put our trust in God and God's power is so much greater than we can believe. So I'm going to just pause here a minute because we might go, yay, they won, you know, and that's good. They trusted God, the enemy's gone, mm -hmm. but um, it doesn't tell us how the angel killed uh, them, right? Mm -hmm. It just says right. they died. Mm -hmm. um, remember another angel flew over, Jason, where was that? The, the angel flew over. Passover the, with the last plague of Egypt. That's right. Mm -hmm. And there was an option mm -hmm. for people in that story mm -hmm. to put yes. a, the, a blood over the doorpost and they would be delivered. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. Does that mean that those uh, Assyrian soldiers mm -hmm. were also given an opportunity uh, to accept uh, the salvation that God could offer them. Jason, what mm. do you think? Well, I think we may have some hints from this story because if you look at the propaganda from the Rabshakeh and Sennacherib, these men, uh, assuming you know that they have free will to be part of this military, they're under leaders who are very corrupt, who are uh, very problematic. And so uh, sometimes what happens is that when you have chosen a leader that is is problematic, you've kind of already made your choice. So it may be possibly that God gave these people a chance and maybe, you know, they've made their choice. And also some of them, uh, just because they died there, that doesn't mean the eternal death. Some of them may somehow have been caught in this situation and they may have accepted uh, the true God beforehand. We don't know the details of all their personal yeah. lives. I really appreciate you saying that because mm -hmm. uh, we look at the outside, God looks at the heart. That's right. uh, in many cultures, and I could name countries where, where wars happened and people were conscripted, they were forced to fight and they didn't believe in what mm. the leadership was doing. Um, so let's, let's not say that all 185,000 were eternally lost. Right. Right. We don't know that, That's but right. they did die. Yeah. And there are consequences when you have corrupt leaders. Now, if I'm reading correctly, the uh, 
what's his name again? The Rab Shekhe. He died. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It doesn't say he lived. So I have a question for you. Why did God allow Sennacherib to live? He didn't die with the 185,000, right? Mm -hmm. Why did God allow him to live and return home? What do you think? First it was prophesied. Right. Okay, that he wasn't going to die, but right. was going to go home. So that ought to have caused him to think on the way home. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Help me, Stephanie. <laughs> I think it, it was prophesied, but it was also for him to see the fulfillment of that God was going to take care of his people. Did, did Sennacherib still have an opportunity yes. Yes. on the way home yes. to repent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and say, yeah. I think I was proud and arrogant mm. in the face of the one true God mm. yeah. and repent? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Or was it too late? It was, what do you think, Billy? Uh, well, it reminds me of Pharaoh, when Pharaoh was pursuing the, the yes. children of Israel, that you know, mm. there were signs and signs after signs, and he kept on pursuing them, and um, eventually you know, there was a fire that, I mean, you see all these signs and your heart is still like a heart of stone, you still mm. want to uh, 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 pursue evil, evil deeds. Uh, that should have been a sign. So that demonstrated that you know God was basically working with him, uh, uh, trying to convince him. Mm -hmm. You still have a chance. You still have a chance. You still have a chance. And he chose not to uh, take opportunity mm -hmm. of that. I'm thinking of a man named Naaman who took soil home after he'd seen a miracle of God. Actually, it was a healing of his leprosy. He mm -hmm. took it home and he said, "Please excuse me when I have to go into the temple of the God there." but, but I'm, I'm going to pray to the God of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. It's like my heart will not bow to those idols. But look at verse 38 of chapter 37, and let's see what happens. Uh, Billy, could you read that verse for us? Yeah, uh, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Now it came to pass, as he was worshiping in the house of Nishrach, his God, that his sons, Adramelech and Sharazer, Sharazer struck him down with the, with the sword, and he escaped into the land of Ararat. Then Isar Hadon, his son, reigned in his place. What's the first thing he does when he gets back home? He worships goes a to pagan worship his god. god. He worships a pagan god mm. who has not delivered him, mm. Mm. who's clearly failed, and is probably just mm. a piece of rock or, or wood with demons behind. Mm. Yeah. He mm. doesn't change. Uh, well, I'm glad we can't judge everyone, but we would certainly say in that situation that his heart was hardened, yeah. mm -hmm. just like Pharaoh's heart, and, and yes. unwilling to change. Sad. Well, let's see what happens now with Hezekiah. Great deliverance has happened, and we're moving into chapter 38 in the last section of our study. And uh, let's, let's see what happens. Uh, and I'm going to ask Lisa, would you read the first nine verses for us? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears and surely I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and the city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow on the sundial, which has gone down with the sun on the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees on the dial by which it had gone down. This is the writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and had recovered from his sickness. Now, I've got a big question for you. I remember hearing about that thing with the sundial, and I don't know how God did that, but if he can speak worlds into existence, he can Absolutely. do that too. 
But I'm troubled that nobody told me in the context of that miracle that actually there was a problem with Hezekiah. The mm -hmm. prophet came and said, time is short, put your house in order. Mm -hmm. What is the appropriate response when a servant of the Lord comes and says, your time is short, put your house in order? What's the appropriate response, Jason? To follow God and, and do as he says. Put your house in order and just say, all right, Lord, well, mm -hmm. thank you for the, be grateful for the time God has given you and prepare for when you have eternity. Hezekiah had walked in the way of the Lord, taken down the high places, seen a great victory. The Lord says, your life is, a, is almost over, put things in order. So Hezekiah mm -hmm. puts things in order and rests yeah. in, the, in his faith in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> yes. yeah. Wouldn't it be great if the story ended like that? Mm, yes, it would, have been better. it would be. Oh, is it possible that sometimes just mm. saying, God, well, I know what you're saying, but I think it would be better if I... Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he recovers. Take us, Stephanie, to mm. chapter 39, verses mm. 1 and 2, because the story ends up not finishing well. And I think the takeaway lesson is when the prophet of the Lord gives us guidance from the Lord, <laughs> follow it, mm. follow it, listen, and, and, and be at peace. Yes. But what happens in chapter 39 of Isaiah? First two verses. All right. And the King James Version says it this way. At that time, Merakdak Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and had recovered. And Hezekiah was glad with them and showed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. What is wrong with that picture, Lisa? You're shaking your head. People from Babylon have come. God has performed a miracle. They heard about Sennacherib. They mm -hmm. heard about that massive deliverance. They may have even heard, uh, heard about his healing. They may have even heard about the sundial. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But what's wrong with this picture? Uh, Hezekiah could not tell them the truth, which is that God had come through for him. He could have testified, this is what my God did. And we don't know why he, whether he was shy or he didn't, have the boldness of faith, but I think the scripture is telling us we need to be bold. We need to tell people, yes, we believe God. God has come through for us, and that testimony can go so much further than we mm. think. So a message comes that there's some people from Babylon, okay? They sent letters and a present for Hezekiah. If I use mm. the same principle from earlier stories, what should Hezekiah have done? Jason? Should have gone to God and possibly even the prophet Isaiah and said, what should I do? Exactly. Lay mm -hmm. it out before the Lord. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Yeah. Say, God, um, th this, this is also kind of problematic because these are foreign emissaries and they're wanting to check out everything here. Will you please show me? And he, the Lord might have said, let them in, but mm -hmm. give, give them a testimony mm -hmm. of what the Lord has done. Instead, he shows all of his wealth. And do you know what the outcome of that is in the rest of the chapter? Well, the Lord Not says, good. because of that, this power is going to come, mm. and, and they're going to take your descendants mm. captive. Some of them will be eunuchs in the court, and you go, oh, I remember that. That's Daniel and his yeah. friends. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not going to happen in your time. Mm. And look at how Hezekiah responds in verse 8 mm -hmm. of chapter 39. Mm. Read that for us, Stephanie, if you would. Reading again from the King James Version. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. He said, Moreover, for there shall be peace and truth in my days. My Bible translation says, At least yeah. there will be peace and truth in my days. Uh, you've <laughs> just been told your descendants are going to be taken as prisoners of war, they're mm. going to be castrated, they, they're going to suffer trauma, and you're saying, well, this is not going to happen while I'm alive. Mm. Billy, you're shaking your head. There's a lesson in this story. We started out by saying that God mm. can work victories, especially in impossible situations. 
you. Yes. Uh, so I'd say, well, I mean, it was so selfish of him to say that. What it, it, it tells me is that we can have victories with God. We can have powerful testimonies in the past that does not guarantee, we cannot rely on these testimonies thinking that, okay, well, I'm, I'm fit for the next round. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that constant renewal that we need to have with God. Mm -hmm. um, the little things that we used to do in the past, the little trust that we used to have in the past, we need to keep on having them um, even after, after those victories. So coming before God with the letters, thinking that, well, you know, I, can still, I need to still do that, maintain my faith, um, and we need to practice these little things so that we don't fall in those, those same traps. Mm -hmm. You know, a text flashed into my mind, and at first I thought, what does that have to do with the study? But it was a confession of Paul when he mm -hmm. said, I die daily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I need to surrender. In another place, Galatians 2, he said, it's not I who lives, but Christ right. lives yes. in me. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a daily decision. Mm -hmm. Right that instead of acting foolishly, mm -hmm. what a sad ending, mm -hmm. that we would, when we face a challenge, yeah. go into the house of the Lord, yes. Yes. lay the problem before the Lord, yeah. mm -hmm. ask for counsel from the Word mm -hmm. by the prophets, yes. and then do what the Lord asks us to do. Yeah. My friend, I don't know what you're dealing with today in your life. You may have some huge complex issue, but I think mm -hmm. the solution while it may not be easy, it's clear. We need to go into the house of the Lord, uh -huh. to lay the problem before the mm -hmm. Lord, mm -hmm. to listen to what He said through the prophets and through the beautiful ministry of the Holy Spirit, and do what the Lord asks us to do. Mm. And let us not forget the victory, because the appropriate response is to praise Him, but not to rest in the past victory, mm -hmm. but to depend on Him every day that every day will be a victory because of His presence in our lives. I long for that. Don't you, team? Yes. Don't we long for that in our lives? Let's pray that we can experience that victory, especially in the impossible times, mm. through a daily dependence on the Lord our God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, it's a solemn lesson, but so needed for each one of us today. The victories of the past are not enough. We need a daily mm -hmm. surrender. Mm. laying everything, including our very lives, before the Lord. Mm. And God, thank you that through the prophet you will guide us, and we will follow wherever you lead. And may honor and glory come to your name. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. Whatever battle you're experiencing, go before the Lord and follow his leading. And then be a blessing to those around you.